Today's video is all about creating an employee attendance sheet that is sure to make tracking attendance a breeze. This worksheet comes loaded with some amazing features such as visualized weekends, holidays of the selected month, auto selection of the type of attendance, and instant summary of daily attendance by category, so that you can plan your working day efficiently. Without further ado, let's dive right in. But before we do, make sure to download the practice workbook from the link provided in the description. You can follow along with me as we go along and develop your skills simultaneously. To begin, I will create a data entry worksheet by including essential details such as the year, month, and the title of the document. One option to update the year and month data is to utilize the spin control button located under the form control option. First, I will position the spin button next to the year entry cell. Then, I will right click on the spin button and select the format control option. Next, I will link the cell to D2, so that the year entry can be adjusted each time the spin control button is clicked. The maximum value can be set as desired, with the incremental value set to 1. To adjust the month value, I will duplicate another spin button and continue the control setup as needed. Once both spin buttons are configured, the year and month data can be easily updated by clicking on the corresponding spin control button. Moving forward, I will automatically generate dates for the selected year and month using the Excel date function. First, I will select the cells for the previously defined year and month, and set the date to the first of the month. To ensure that only the date value is visible, I will customize the date value format using the Format Cell option. To generate the date values for the following days, I will simply add one to the previous date. This formula can be copied and pasted to cover all 31 days of the month. After generating the date values, I will modify the template to improve its appearance and usability. When extracting the month number of the generated date values, it may result in dates from the following month being included. To prevent this, we can use the Excel if function to only display the date values for the selected month. To do this, I will use the Excel if function in cell D4. The month value of the date value is equal to the selected month. I will keep the same date value. If fails, I need the date value to be blank. By using this formula, we can ensure that only the date values for the selected month are displayed, while the other dates are hidden. If the selected month is February, it may result in an error value since February only has 28 or 29 days. To prevent this, we can use the Excel if error function to make any error values invisible. After generating the date values, we can define the first day of the week using the Excel weekday function. To do this, we can select the date value and define the return type as the first day of the week. For example, we can choose return type as 2, to indicate that Monday is the first day of the week. Once we have defined the first day of the week, we can copy the formula to return the weekday value for one month. For example, if we refer to the current month, 1st of June is Thursday, which is fourth day of the week. So the formula has returned me the correct values. However, there may be an error value at the end due to the blank date value. To make any error values invisible, we can use the if error function. Next, to display the weekdays for the generated dates, we can use the Excel text function along with the left function to extract the first letter of the weekday name. The triple D format code specifies that the weekday name should be abbreviated to three letters. And the left function to extract the first letter from the left side of the resulting text string. Copy the formula and paste it into the cells of the weekday column for all the dates in the month. Now, we can add the employee ID, 
and employee name columns to the worksheet, and format the worksheet as desired. To make the attendance sheet more informal, we can highlight the weekend columns. As we defined earlier, Monday is our first day of the week. Hence, the weekend will be six and seven day of the week. We can use this technique in conditional formatting to highlight the weekend column. To apply the conditional formatting, first, select the cell ranges that we want to apply the conditional formatting. Then choose new rule from the conditional formatting option. Select the formula option from the new formatting rule window. In the formula field, type like, equal weekday, then select the date value cell, freeze the row number. Next, enter value 2 as return type argument. As we defined earlier, this value should be greater than 5. This will return, true if the value is more than 5. Which is our weekend of the month. Next. Click the format button and set the fill color as you desired with applying patterns. Then click OK to close the window. When a month is selected, the corresponding weekend is highlighted to provide a clear visual representation of the days off. This highlighting is not static, but rather dynamic, meaning that if the user decides to change the month, the weekend for the newly selected month will automatically be highlighted. Now we can hide the weekday rows. Additionally, we can integrate the holidays of the selected month into the calendar view by creating a new worksheet to add the holidays for the year 2023. To identify the holidays for the selected month, we will use the Excel match function to match the holiday date values against the dates in the selected month. By doing so, we can dynamically highlight the holidays on the calendar, allowing the user to easily plan their schedule around these important dates. To apply conditional formatting to the calendar, we will first need to select the area where we want to apply the formatting. Once we have selected the area, we can navigate to the conditional formatting options and select the new rule option. In the new window that appears, we will choose the formula method to determine the conditional formatting. From here, we will enter the match function to identify any dates that match the defined holiday dates from the holiday worksheet. To do this, we will select the date value as the lookup argument and lock the row. Then, we will select the defined holiday dates from the holiday worksheet and include an exact match requirement in the formula. Once this formula is set up, it will return true when there is a date value that matches one of the defined holiday dates. We can then apply a cell format to highlight the date columns and make it clear which days are holidays. Click OK to apply the conditional formatting. As you can see now, the holiday date column is highlighted for the selected month. When user changes the month and the holidays will be highlighted dynamically. To streamline the attendance tracking process, I will create a separate worksheet to define the different types of attendance that can be recorded. In order to make it faster and easier for users to enter attendance data, I will set up a drop-down list in the attendance range. To do this, I will select the entire range where the drop-down list should appear, and then choose the data validation option from the data tab. From there, I will select the list option and choose the types of attendance that we defined earlier in the separate worksheet. This will allow users to easily select the appropriate attendance type for each employee, reducing the risk of errors and making the attendance tracking process more efficient. In order to better visualize attendance data and make it easier to quickly identify patterns and trends, it can be helpful to establish a color code for each type of attendance. For example, we could choose to highlight all instances of absent attendance in red. To do this, we will use the same conditional formatting option that we used earlier to highlight holidays. This color coding system can be customized to suit the needs of the organization and can make it much easier to quickly analyze attendance data. To provide a summary of attendance data by type, we will add new rows to the worksheet.
To calculate the total attendance for each attendance type, we will utilize the count if function in Excel. It's important to ensure that the rows are locked in the formula, and then we can copy the formula for the entire month. However, to improve readability, we can choose to remove any zero values from the summary ranges. To do this, we will select the summary ranges and choose the Format Cells option. From there, we will select the custom option and enter three semicolons immediately after the term General. This will make any zero values invisible in the selected ranges, improving the readability and clarity of the attendance summary. By doing this, we can quickly and easily get an overview of attendance patterns by type, which can be useful for identifying areas where improvements can be made. We have almost complete our daily employee attendance worksheet, but this work is limited to enter attendance data only for one month. Hence each time you need to create a copy of the empty worksheet and define the month name as a worksheet name. To make auto-generating a new empty worksheet we can use a VBA application to do this. I have given the VBA code to generate new worksheet. And watch till the end how I am developing this to create new attendance worksheet with once click. To create a new command button in Excel, select the developer tab and choose the form controls option. Add a new button and name it new sheet in the pop-up window, then click new to open the VBA editor. Next. Create a new sub-procedure to call the duplicate sheet procedure. Add the duplicate worksheet sub-procedure and copy and paste the VBA code provided in the description below. This code reads the month name from cell A1 and defines it as the new worksheet name. It also defines the month number to be defined in cell N2 in the new sheet. To define the new month name, you can use the Excel date function. In the month argument, add 1 to return the date value for the next month. Then, use the text function to return the month name. By following these steps, you can easily create a new worksheet with a specific month name and number in Excel using VBA. Great work! We have covered all the necessary steps to create an employee attendance sheet. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel for more informative content in the future. Thank you for watching, and feel free to leave your feedback and suggestions in the comments section below.